The Act of Settlement in 1701 ruled out any Catholics or their spouses from becoming monarch. The legislation made it clear that no sovereign, quote, shall profess the popish religion or shall marry a papist. Strong language. The sovereign must promise to uphold the Protestant succession, so it begs the question, is the coronation anti-Catholic? <laughs> Joining us now to discuss this is James somerville Meikle, Deputy Director of the Catholic Union. Well, James, first of all, is it anti-Catholic? Well, Calvin, good evening. It's great to be with you again. Thank you for coming uh, on. Is it anti-Catholic? I think... Uh, it's definitely pro-Christian. Right. Um, I was really struck by the service today by just how overtly Christian it is. And the very first words you heard today were, um, I come in his name and after his example, um, not to be served, but to serve. And I think all Christians watching that could find common cause with the example of our, of our Lord. Um, whether it's anti-Catholic... Um, I think we've got a lot better. So 100 years ago in uh, 1902, when King Edward VII took the oath, uh, so he swore that the Catholic mass was superstitious and idolatrous. Mm. Uh, so we've come a long way since then. Um, clearly, the oath that uh, King Charles swore today, he swore to be a faithful Protestant and that his heirs and successors would be Protestant. But I think he really went out of his way in the prayers before that oath and in the greeting he gave to faith leaders afterwards mm. to make it clear that he would be a, uh, a leader for people of all faiths and none. So I think for Catholics today, it's a great moment of celebration. I like your stance. And, and for the first time, obviously, since the Reformation, there was a Catholic bishop involved in the coronation, mm. actually giving God's blessing to the king uh, in, in Cardinal Nichols. I thought that was amazing to see Christian unity. And also the Pope's Secretary of State, uh, Cardinal Parolin, was here mm. too. Now, that is significant. I mm. thought, OK, this is great. Christian unity, Protestants, Catholics coming yeah. together in Christ. However, the response has not been that way online. So obviously the Pope gave a true relic of the true cross to uh, the king to mm. put in his cross for the procession. Again, I thought that was great. A lot of Catholics have been commenting, um, why are we allowing this? Because it, it's, it's a fake mass with a, with a, with a fake um, ceremony, a fake sacrament, and we have a lot of Protestants cosplaying. Now, uh, that doesn't shout to me Christian <laughs> unity, but is this a common kind of conception? Well, I think you have to cast your mind back to 1953 when Her Late Majesty was crowned. And at that ceremony, um, the papal delegation waited outside the abbey. Mm. You know, they weren't even involved in the, in the ceremony. So we've come an awful long way. And I think there is often a tendency to look at things and... Um, to think that things could be so much better, yeah. and that's true. I think there was still a way to go in terms of improving uh, interfaith dialogue. Um, but my goodness me, I mean, we've come such a long way. You know, from 1953, when the papal delegation waited outside the Abbey. You know, today we had uh, Cardinal Nichols, yeah. uh, the leader of the Catholic Church in England and Wales, part of the ceremony, taking part in those, in those prayers. As you mentioned, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, gave a true relic of the cross uh, to King Charles to use as part of the, the ceremony. So we've come a long way. And, you know, I think to those people who are uh, frustrated with today's ceremony, I would say that, um, you know, cast your minds back to where we were 70 years ago. I think uh, we've come an awful long way. And, you know, when Charles this monarch uh, professes to be defender of the faith, um, I think he says that, you know, yes, on the one hand, to uphold the Protestant faith, but through his words and his deeds, he showed that he wants to represent and uh, support people of all faiths. And I think Catholics and people of all, fa all faiths can draw great, great strength and comfort from that. I'm with you on that. I think, actually, when we look at the uh, Nigel Ray's the 2013 um, Settlement Act, that mm. now the monarch can marry a Catholic. So mm. in the future, we could even have yeah. a mixed marriage monarchy, which mm. would be strengthening the relationship between Rome and, and Canterbury. It would be interesting. I mean, as you say, it was only 10 years ago uh, that uh, if you married into the royal family, you had to give up your claim to the throne. Uh, that was one of the last acts of Her Late Majesty the Queen, making sure that uh, if you married into the royal family, you didn't have to... It wasn't a choice between your faith uh, or, the, or the crown. Huge progress on that front. Um, 
There is further to go. Mm. Uh, of course there is. But I think today is a great day for uh, celebration and to recognise how far we've come. I mean, looking back to... Uh, 1902, as I was saying, when, you know, King Edward VII said the, the Catholic Mass was superstitious and idolatrous. Mm. And we've come so far from then. And actually, I think having a defender of the faith is very appealing for people who are uh, of different faiths. Because in a world that feels increasingly hostile to people who have any faith, mm. um, having someone there who was overtly a defender of the faith is very comforting. And in fact, if we look at the coronation service itself, it has maintained its Catholicity even throughout mm. the Protestant Reformation. So that's something to cling on to. Let's have a look at what you guys have been saying in the Crusader comments. Before we take a final break, we'll have a look at what you've been saying about today's topics. And Tony says, I think the coronation was as good as it could have been Christian-wise. I think the Bible was honoured and inviting representatives of other faiths was an acknowledgement that the king was over everyone who lives in Britain, not just Christians. That is a very fair point, Tony. Thank you mm. for that. Uh, God was honoured, even though a lot of people might not have been believers. This is the inherited religion of our country, and it would be wrong to mix Islamic or Hindu or whatever with a Christian service. Yeah, I mean, you're hitting all the nails on the head there, Tony. Thank you for that. Beryl wrote in to say, Calvin, this country, in quotation marks, uh-oh, which Charles is king of, is not just England. There is a union. It's called United Kingdom of Great Britain. Or, or Great Britain. Well, yes, it is. It's called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Absolutely, I'm with you. Uh, I don't know what you're comment correcting me on, but what I would say is that the service itself was English, and the service itself has maintained its Englishness from the 10th century. So we've, we've maintained that service itself, although we are one country. Um, we can still have elements of Englishness. It's not something to be ashamed of, even though we're British, we're English too. 